2020 what a year what a year and at so many levels right political economical environmental medical and most importantly at a human level in some ways we witness the best and worst sides of humanity this year 2020 has also been a serious wake up call for sustainability globally the face of climate change in 2020 was undoubtedly greta thunberg climate change is no longer a mandate of age scientists and liberal elites but a powerful protest is now being led by the vulnerable generation who will inherit all of our mistakes unprecedented wildfires driven by global warming hit countries like the us australia and russia countries who might so far have thought they were protected from the worst outcomes of irresponsible consumption photos of clear skies water bodies happy birds wildlife filled up our internet during the global covid lockdown and showed hopeless and desperate people what earth could be like with just a small pause on polluting human activities and the outcome was a renewed focus the european union made an ambitious pledge to going carbon neutral by 2050 china made a similar pledge to going carbon neutral by 2060 joe biden the incoming president of the us has made addressing climate change the top priority for his administration In India also we saw some really progressive EV policies from the likes of Delhi. Twenty twenty has also been a pivotal year for electric mobility. Electric mobility is finally consumer facing, and Tesla has made that happen. This is a sign of a maturing industry where the end consumers are now able to participate actively in the economy. and here are a few staggering numbers in 2020 tesla made half a million vehicles it is now worth 800 billion dollars by making electric cars not just sexy but also commercially attractive tesla has become single handedly the most serious threat to traditional automotive companies in decades other large oems have responded by launching their own evs and announcing plans to ramp up production and it has inspired tons of other startups neo a chinese ev company for example following in tesla's wake is now worth almost 90 billion dollars many other ev upstarts have raised tons of capital from private and public markets and the reason for this success is a few different things coming together one great products that seem to have captured consumer and investor imagination what the for on what the future of mobility could look like two launch of mass market evs like model 3 three, three government subsidies that make them affordable and four upfront investment by the public and private sector in a distributed charging infrastructure across the length and breadth of western economies do know that sustainability was not one of those main reasons and this is happening differently in different parts of the world the ev revolution in china started much earlier than the west and followed a very different path contrary to the west where four wheelers are driving the electric revolution china's electric journey really started in bikes and scooters almost a decade ago china started discouraging ownership of petrol two wheelers in major cities today china sells over 30 million electric two wheelers a year china now accounts for almost 99% of total two wheeler electric stock in the world or roughly 260 million vehicles and there is no single large company that dominates this huge market china has hundreds of two wheeler oems with the largest players being less than 10% of the market 
China also has almost three and a half million electric vehicles on road, or almost 50% of all electric cars globally. But like most things in China, this change was driven top down with a clear mandate from the central government to make a shift towards electric mobility. This led to policy changes at both the industrial and the consumer levels, which drove adoption. And as most of you would already know, unfortunately, India does not sell a lot of electric cars or two wheelers. According to a Bloomberg article from October 2019, India sold only 8,000 electric cars in the last six years. 8,000. China sells more than that in two days. The EV revolution in India is happening, but it is not happening top down, but completely bottoms up. And in parts of the industry, we often overlook. In large parts of North and East India, we see that almost all of the last mile commute has been turned electric, thanks to the tremendous growth of the electric rickshaw segment. There's over a million e-rickshaws in India today, transporting over 100 million passengers daily. And while lower taxes and government subsidies have helped promote these vehicles, they have been such a success largely because they solved an unmet need for the first and last mile commutes, much cheaper than existing options. Each of these vehicles drive 80 to 100 kilometers a day and carry three to four passengers at a time. And hence, these 1 million vehicles alone give us 300 million clean passenger kilometers probably in the same ballpark as the entire global EV car fleet put together. So while we may not sell a lot of electric cars or scooters, in India, we have made good progress in converting many polluting miles in our cities to clean electric miles. So when you take a step back and you look at how this has happened in US, China, and India, what we are really witnessing across these different countries is the rebirth of the automotive industry whose future does not resemble its past. And while, and, and which may not have a single right answer or the same answer for everyone. While some countries take lead on electrifying personal transportation, others could go after public transportation or even cargo vehicles. And some may even invent new form factors that don't exist yet. And this is why I believe India has a real opportunity to reimagine this new paradigm and take lead in this new mobility revolution. The logical question to ask is where is this all heading? Right? And whether we can expect most mobility to become sustainable soon. My view on this is that we have made good progress, but we have some serious challenges ahead to scale electric mobility sustainably. In most countries globally, EVs are not only more expensive upfront, their running cost is not low enough to compensate for that additional upfront investment for an average customer and how much they drive. For example, in India, despite lower GST, fame subsidies, and free road tax, EVs are still 50% more expensive upfront. And hence, as of today, battery electric vehicles account for less than 3% of the global automotive market. In India, the prevailing view amongst the industry is that the next three to five years will see some EV adoption but limited to really to commercial vehicles, three wheelers, taxis, bikes for deliveries and buses. The view is also reflected to some extent in the fame to policy of the central government. The industry also believes that for personal electric vehicles to really start gaining serious traction, the on-road price of EVs will need to be close to the on-road price of an equivalent gasoline vehicle. 
This means a very, very significant reduction in battery and electric power train costs, along with continuation of existing subsidies and tax benefits. So it could be a while before EVs would be cheaper than gasoline vehicles on a level playing field. We would also need to invest heavily to set up charging infrastructure across most of our cities and highways, and also invest in upgrading our entire power grid to support fast charging. This is not trivial. We would need to also change the mix of our power generation from coal and natural gas to renewables. In India, nearly 75% of our electricity is still generated from burning coal and gas. Worldwide, this number is at 60%. Renewable resources like solar and wind, while almost as economical as thermal power now, they lack the predictability and flexibility that the thermal power plant gives. And we have not yet found a good solution to this problem. So clearly there are some serious challenges ahead and we have some way to go. But there is also strong reason for hope that EVs are the future. Because when we look at electric mobility through the lens of sustainability and cost alone, we miss a very important factor at play. I believe that the future of mobility is electric and the shift to EVs will happen much faster than most people expect, but not because all consumers will suddenly care about sustainability and not because the electric vehicles will suddenly get 30 to 50% cheaper but because the new age electric vehicles will offer a much, much, much better customer experience. Let me make this point differently. I am not saying that sustainability is less important. On the contrary, I believe it is the single most important challenge for our generation to overcome. What I am saying is that we need to make EVs so good so much better that in today's world of disinformation and climate denial, their adoption happens irrespective of the belief that the consumers hold. In fact, I will go so far as to say that the shift to electric mobility will be equivalent to the shift from telephones to smartphones. Most likely the smartphones that most of you own today are quite a lot more expensive than the desk phones from 1990s and 2000s. But we keep buying new and more expensive ones every few years because they do a ton more things and they do them much better than a humble desk phone. When the first iPhone was launched by Steve Jobs in 2007, it was priced at $499. Within just over a decade, you can get much more powerful Android smartphones that do a lot more for less than $100. But the prices came down as a consequence of scale and then fed into it rather than the other way around. I'm making two different points here. One is that fundamentally new technologies that create more value and offer better customer experience tend to be more expensive but that doesn't stop them from becoming commonplace. And second, that with competition, scale, and technology evolution, prices for these, two, these new technologies do come down rapidly, although they don't have to be cheaper than the alternative they replaced. Just like how air ticket prices have fallen significantly over time, but they ne may never be cheaper than taking an overnight train or a bus. This will be the same with electric vehicles. The reason for this is that electric vehicles are by nature much simpler. They have a lot fewer parts. And they are completely digital, which allows us to reimagine them as devices that are more than just a way to go from point A to point B. And honestly, electric vehicles are also a catalyst 
for the automotive industry to start thinking in step jumps than in incremental changes we've seen for decades. And we already have some of the building blocks. EVs have already brought a new type of convenience to our lives. You can charge them at your home, at your office, or in a parking lot of a shopping mall and avoid a trip to fuel stations. EVs are already much more comfortable to drive and a lot more energy efficient as they capture back energy using regenerative braking. All EVs have connectivity and are able to update themselves. Their machine learning algorithms are able to learn every day and get better. They're filled with sensors that allow them to track the health and well-being of the car and its occupants. And hence, just like your smartphone, your EV today is better than your EV yesterday. So hence, when you buy an EV, you're not just buying what it is today, you're buying what it can be in a few years as it continues to update and learn. We don't know all the different features and use cases of EVs that designers and engineers and entrepreneurs will dream up. Just like we didn't know what smartphones will become when they first came up. But as humans, vehicles, energy networks and transportation infrastructure all get connected, the new opportunities are boundless. For example, it will be possible for these vehicles to evaluate if and when they need service, and in many cases to be able to diagnose and fix themselves, and in others get remote servicing. The driving experience will be significantly better, smoother, safer, faster. Vehicles will update themselves on the go and adapt to your driving style rather than you adapting to driving the car. Just like how your new smartphone automatically updates all your apps on the old smartphone to offer a continuity of experience. Imagine what that could be like, the vehicle just automatically transforming to be best suited for you. Vehicles will adapt and respond to environment and traffic conditions real time. They will know what routes have potholes or poor telecom connections or lower energy usage and optimize your navigation accordingly. Your electric vehicle will also be able to balance the grid by providing storage during lean hours. It will also be able to power your phone during blackouts. I'm sure none of us can wait for the day when we don't have to turn on these large polluting generators every time we have a power cut, which for many of us honestly happens almost every other day. These vehicles would also make accidents extremely rare. Even if we don't think about fully autonomous vehicles yet, these vehicles can become smart enough to figure out when you're drunk, when you're sleepy, when you're tired, not paying attention to the road, crossing a risky intersection, going above the speed limit, have another car in your blind spot, and then intervene to avoid an accident. With 5G and video conferencing, we can even imagine a fully functional office on wheels for people that are always on the move. Maybe some people won't even need an office. Just park your EV in a parking lot of a Starbucks and continue to work. We're only at the very beginning of this huge mobility and energy revolution and the future is only limited by our ability to imagine. So the question we must ask is not how we make EVs much cheaper, but how do we make them much, much better? Thank you.